Hola Toto. Hi all. Welcome back to Learning Language, Cognados, Falsos, Cinco. Five more false cognates. Again, I've said it multiple times, I'll say it again. A false cognate is literally a contextual mapping. Um, we'll be working through more of the terms on our Spark Notes chart. And again, I'm just going through, again, these are all unique uh, translations, but just give you some more history of where these words came from, how these words got solidified with their meanings, um, and any changes or disagreements I have. Um, so actually the first one's the most interesting, I have a lot to say about that, but idioma versus idiom. Letter cognate agree, sound cognate not really, idioma, but I hear idiom. Meh, maybe, but right. Idioma, dictionary, I agree, goes to language. Modismo goes to idiom. But I'm very sure modismo is mode with ismo at the end. Idiom goes to modismo, and language goes to lengua and idioma. Lengua first. And on here they have idioma, ace language, and idiom, ace modismo. Modismo, ace mode, idioma, all right, there, there's, there's really no, like, I'm just going to read you my notes. I'm not going to rederive it. English speakers say language to censor with an S, right? Language, watch your language. Why do people say that? Because you said bad words, and they knew exactly what you meant. But it, what is an idiom, right? Just going through some definitions off Google. Again, I don't have to check the English to English dictionary so you can just differentiating the context of English. Um, so I don't really need to check on my English definitions. But on Google it says, idiom is a group of words established by usage as having meaning not deducible from those of their individual words, such as raining cats and dogs. Other definition, a characteristic mode of an expression in music or art. A mode in music is the same notes in different order or different ways to play them. An idiom. The real thing here, all things considered, idiom, the English word idiom, what does that mean? Idiom? Sounds like idiot, right? Linguistic, like letters. Idiom, idiot, changes by one letter. Idiot and espanol. Pendejo. Swine. Stupid. Idiots. Here's an idiom. Idiots, a stupido. Idiots are stupid. That's English word and one English word, one Spanish word. Stupid, a stupido. Idiots, a stupido. And so, like, why, why, why is idio idioma the definition for language? Is because there's no definitive languages. A language is a grammar, an order of sound. This sound, that sound, that sound. Range expands base literally with consonants. That's a real theorem, boys and girls. And so a language is just a consistent order of sound. Rhythm regulates grammar. Boy, no bamo, para persona. Right? Boy, I go. Bamo is short for bamos, we go. But there's no bamo for, like, why, why do irregular verbs have different conjugation patterns? This is, again, don't know the, the explicit algorithm set amount of things to say about here, but clearly the irregular conjugations of different languages is because of rhythm preserving the sound. That, that's why that occurs. Porque, by that. Rhythm regulates sound consistency. That's how you hear different languages. That's where accents come from. That's when you, when you have an accent, and again, like I said, you'll hit a couple letters or a couple syllables correctly and then go back to your native language, and it's not consistent. People still hear what you say as long as it's enough is close. But rhythm regulates consistency. Idioms are metaphors, right? Metaphor versus analogy. Like or as is an analogy. Metaphor is a direct contextual mapping. My definition. But idioms are metaphors, right? Metaphorical. Idioms are not literal. Idioms are contextual. Idioms are subjective, right? What's a noun now? What is a noun now? An objective. Objectively speak. It's subjective and objective in the English language, very clear, emphatic phrases. Subjectively, you're speaking not facts. No ser. 
Objectively, ser is definition, being, definition. So this was, I guess, this was big, because this, this literally proves what I say again, multiple, I've already proven the things I'm saying, I'm just doing translations here, but idioma as language in the Spanish language, like language is not clearly defined in English or anywhere. I mean, it's a dialect, it's a locality, it's a, again, a structured grammar. Um, so I had a lot to say for that one. Next one, ignorar. They have ignorar, to be unaware of, and then to ignore in Spanish, English or Spanish, no hacer caso de. Ignorar in the dictionary, in the context of no sabe, again, if you see something, if you look up a word, in the words of the evidence, the empirical evidence, people say these things, and I look them up in the dictionary and see what other words are associated. And if you see a definition and the first thing is here, they're providing you a context. Ignorar, no sabe, don't know, not knowing, more literally, to be unaware of, they have that as a phrase. Hacer caso omiso de, doing, case, omitting, of, omiso, the past participle of omitir, to ignore, to disregard, semicolon, in parentheses, despreciar, depreciation probably, to shrug off, to discount. To discount would be to depreciate. No hacer case, caso de, not doing case of. Literally, um, ing versus to, and again, like I said, all of the, the reason they, they have to in front of the infinitive verbs is because they are taken out of context. That's literally what happens. I've said that multiple times. I have it written down again. Ignore as a verb, literally in the definite dictionary goes to ignorar. Unaware goes to inconsciente. Inconsciente, in conscious as an adjective. And then has the phrase to be unaware of as to ignore. But I thought this was very interesting. It had unaware and then hyphen. And you also have other things in the dictionary like the phrases. They're in bold. English to... Like I dropped the, it says ignorar, to be unaware of. Again, to be, ser o estar, of, de. So I just look up unaware. Again, anytime you have a negative definition, it's very, very not solidified or contextually local or something. But it was very interesting. They had unaware and then hyphen, bold, hyphen S. Nobody says unawares in, in English. So that, I don't know where that comes from. But again, that's slang, that's something. But it says, sin darse cuenta. Sin without darse, giving one cuenta calculation. That's just more specific. But it was an interesting phrase because no one says unawares. But omis, omiso is an adjective. Hacer caso omiso de. They said to ignore, but omiso is the past participle of literally of omitting. Aware in the dictionary goes to consciente, enterado. Enterado, dictionary, goes to informed. So, right, English, ignore, if I ignore you, that's like personal, there's some emotion there, but ignorance it is unawareness. That, that's it's the same thing that they're trying to differentiate. Um, but again, no hacer casa de, don't, not doing case of, right? I, I might case a scene if I'm a police officer, I'm not going to case my front yard if I'm a homeowner. So more just kind of like ignorar, general, just unawareness, ignorance, to ignore, more personal. Not doing case of. No thanks, no hacer caso de. Next show, still rolling. Next we have intoxicar versus to intoxicate. Again, the he, the x, x, e, really does not, I mean, it looks the same letters, but sound is not like intoxicar. Eh, I would still say that would not be a sound cognitive. But dictionary, in my agreement, to poison, to intoxicate, when you get intoxicating or poisoning, um, on here they have, what do they have? Intohikar, to poison. All right, in English we have a clear definition between poison and venom. It's poisonous, and you, you eat something, and it intoxicated gives you disease. It's poison. If something bites you, and, and, and it has... It's venomous. So we're making clear differentiation in English. But they have intoicar to poison, to intoxicate, 
and borachar. In Toei Cargan, to poison, to intoxicate, and borachar. A una persona, to intoxicate. Again, they give you a, a context. A una persona. El semicolon, el carburador, to flood. Intoxicate goes to embriagar, also exhilarate. This was interesting. Intoxicate, English to Spanish, says embriagar, and then parentheses and then context. All these other parentheses are coming first. This one has also exhilarate after embriagar. K fucking K? What? <laughs> Semicolon, then it has uh, parentheses in front, poison in tohikar. And then again I switch this to not to poison, but poisone in the general, in the infinitive, goes to in directly. So drinking versus poisoning, right? Poisons, toxics. So something poisonous, toxic are adjectives in natural English use. Right? Beber acerca. Drinking beer. Ki, who? Aki, here. To who? Aki, here. But I have when do English speakers say intoxicating as an idiom, right? That song was intoxicating. That makes sense. That relationship was intoxicating. That romance was intoxicating. It just means like grabs your attention, makes you think, makes you be involved. So intoxicating idiomatically in English is very broad. Um, historically, I think poisoning was probably used for a lot more of hits, assassinations throughout time. So again, in the in the, in the, in the NL Espanol, these differentiations are clear between water between drinking, and they also have emborrachar, say, to get drunk. So, we have liquid waters, again, flood, el carburador, to flood, in the context of emborrachar, to get drunk, and to poison and intoxicate. Poison and intoxicate, intoxication in English is much more broad, poison is more direct, um, but, again, poisoning, water, and then drink cerveza, beer, alcohol. Uh, I don't know what alcohol would be generally in Spanish, but cerveza is beer generally. Um, drinking, and they might not even have like distilled spirits in ancient times and shit, so it might just be cer cerveza. Um, fourth one, introducir versus to introduce a person. In this one they have a bunch of like hyphens and shit. It says introducir, to introduce, in the context a topic, and then English and Spanish have introduce a person, presentar. Dictionary, in my agreement, introducir, it says in context, parentheses, incorporar, to incorporate, incorporating, to introduce. So incorporation, if I was going to incorporate something, I was going to integrate something. Very broad English use. Colocar, to put in, to insert. Didn't look up colocar directly, but presentar to present, a una persona, to introduce, plus five or six definitions. Then just introduce as, as a verb, put in, in the context of put in or bring, introducir, to a person, presentar. To present, presenting or introducing in English. I'm going to introduce you to my infant. I'm going to introduce you, I don't have any kids. I wish I did, I mean, I'm 28, wish I had a family, don't. But I'm going to introduce you to my kid. But, but he can't talk yet, so how am I going to introduce you to him? I'm going to present him. Simba and the lion. Here's my kid. You present a person because this is right. The language is defined in complete generality. The farther back you go in history, we're talking large scale historical time frames. The sentiment, there, there's one body. Like people really make a differentiation between, right? You have to be special to, to have a differentiation about an individual. So to present to me is more towards birth. And introducing, English can be a lot of different things. You can introduce, I'm going to introduce Billy to Joe. I'm going to introduce a concept, a topic. But the, the real contextual difference here to me is, again, presenting a child. Presenting a child to the group. English would say introduce, not present, or present. We do say present. Is Billy in class present? But to present correctly... For the 
verbs or whatever we're doing. Because less glamour, less formality, not different. Right? If I was gonna if I presented you my kid, that sounds like more glamorous, more again, important. Here's a birth. I'm gonna present somebody, I'm gonna introduce somebody. Um last one, largo versus large. Largo goes to long, discorso, discu discussion, lengthy. Excuse me, in the context of discorso, discorso, lengthy. Grande goes to large, big, importante. In the context of importante, goes to great. Large goes to grande. Long goes to largo, plus 27 phrases. So I just have an English clear, large, big, grande. The real differentiation or the real English to Spanish, large, we say that for big, big means grande, total. Um, large is common but expressive adjective in English, right? We say big a lot more frequently than we say large. When do English speakers say big versus large? What do they have on here? Again, as big is just much more frequent, large, again, this is something about direction. Big is size, large when they have long. Largo, long, that would be more in two-dimensional, linear, something's long. Uh, I don't have a big line, I have a large line. Um, but this differentiation to me is again about size, about dimensionality, large, largo. So that's really all I have for that one. So those are my Cinco Cognados Fosos para what? For today. Hope you learned something. Again, just trying to give you more context and where these words really get solidified. It's not that I disagree with the, again, I disagree with the classification of Cognados Fosos. You guys just aren't clearly differentiating the context in which these phrases are being used. So I hope you learned something on learning language Cognados Fosos Cinco. And happy, I didn't even know this was not timed. I did not know this was Spanish Heritage Month. It's been 12 months. It seems like every day, every month, there's a new fucking super party for something. Please educate yourselves. Please learn. And maybe I'll have a family form 35 because people respect their own fucking laws. Probably not, though. Genuinely, probably not. All of the people that just fucking get fucked throughout college, steal a bunch of shit, go get a shitty job and career, career hop, they're going to tell me how to speak words and don't fucking feel what they mean. And then you're going to slow down science for 20 years, and it's not going to fucking matter because words still have fucking meaning. And you people are goddamn idiots. Thanks for watching.